Here, we are told that a fish can expand or retract its air sacs in order to change its density and allow it to more easily swim at various depths in water. We have it given to us that the fish's density with its air sacs collapsed is uh, 1.08 grams per cubic centimeter. And I have uh, defined that as rho, the common symbol for density, uh, sub f for fish. Uh, and uh, I've also noted the density of water, which we already know to be 1.00 grams per cubic centimeter. Now we are asked to find the fraction of its expanded body volume uh, to which the fish must inflate its air sacs in order to reduce its density to be the same as the density of water, or uh, 1.00 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, to more easily see what this problem is asking us, uh, let's define some variables and use them to write out a fraction that illustrates this problem, uh, the ratio we're looking for. So let's set V uh, to mean the volume of the fish with its air sacs collapsed. And uh, I've defined V sub A as the volume of just the air sacs. Because the problem asks us to look for a fraction of the total expanded body volume, let's put the sum of the collapsed body volume and the expanded portion uh, in the denominator as V plus V sub A. We're looking for the fraction of this volume that the fish must add, so in the numerator, we'll just have the volume of the air sacs, V sub A because that's the expanded uh, new portion of the fish's volume. Now, let's try and find some representation for V sub A and V, so that we can plug these into this fraction and find the ratio. Because the problem gives us information about the density of the fish, and the density of the water is something we have as a given anyway, let's use that information in this problem. Let's relate the volume of the fish to the density of the fish using the density of the formula. We know the density formula is equal to uh, mass over volume. Uh, so let's just isolate volume and solve for that. So let's multiply the volume by both sides here, and they'll cancel out on the right side, and then we want to divide the density by both sides. Uh, so we end up with volume equals mass over density. Let's actually relate this to the information we have from the problem. The volume of the fish with its air sacs collapsed is just going to be equal to the mass of the fish divided by the density of the fish with its air sacs collapsed. So I'll actually add a little f subscripts here to show we're referring to the mass of the fish and the density of the fish. Now the volume of the fish after it expands its air sacs, or V plus V sub A, I'll write that out here. The volume of this, if we once again relate it to density, is going to be given by the mass of the fish, which is unchanging, the mass of the fish won't change, and it's going to be divided by the density of the water, because in this scenario, we want the fish to expand its air sacs in such a way that its density changes to the density of water. So I'll include a row sub V at the bottom. Now, because the one variable constant here in between both of these volume formulas is the mass of the fish, let's isolate the mass of the fish in both of these formulas and set them equal to each other. So uh, in this top formula, for, for example here, uh, we can multiply uh, rho sub f to both sides, and we'll see that the mass of the fish is equal to uh, the density of the fish, or rho sub f times V, and then in this lower portion here, uh, once again doing the same thing, multiplying rho sub W to both sides to isolate the mass of the fish, we can see that M sub F is going to be equal to rho sub W, the density of water, times uh, the sum total expanded volume of the fish, or times V plus V sub A in the parentheses here. Now, because both of these formulas are equal to m sub f, we can set both of these equal to each other. And that is exactly what I've done here. 
Now, substituting in our values for density, uh, this becomes 1.08 grams per cubic centimeter uh, times V equals 1.00 grams per cubic centimeter times V plus V sub A. Now, because we have the grams per cubic centimeters units on both sides, we can cancel these units out and make the numbers in our equation effectively dimensionless. And uh, also, because we've done that, uh, now we have this effectively dimensionless one here, since the density of water is just one. We can have this number completely disappear, since multiplying by one doesn't change anything. In other words, our equation has now become 1.08v equals v plus v sub a. And you'd be right to notice that this looks familiar. Uh, we have a v plus a v sub a in this equation. That's one of the terms that we wanted to find in our original ratio up here. So let's, let's rewrite this down here and uh, add that in. So v plus v sub a is going to be equal to 1.08v. So let's add that into our denominator here, 1.08v. And we still are looking for just v sub a on its own. So let's subtract v from both sides of this equation so that we can get v sub a on its own. So v plus v sub a minus v is just going to be equal to v sub a. And then we want to subtract 1.08v minus 1v. And that is just going to be equal to 0.08v. And that is our value for uh, v sub a. So let's substitute this in for, into the top of our little numerator, uh, into our ratio here. And now we can see that since there's a single v in both the numerator and the denominator, our v's will cancel out. And now we are just left with this ratio that we can easily calculate and find that it is going to be equal uh, to uh, 0 0.074. Or we can multiply this by 100 to convert it into a percentage of 7.4%. And this is how much of its body the fish will have to expand in order for the fish to have the same density of water.